Hey everyone, Ricardo here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to set up a reverse power element using the SCL 751A relay as an example. Now just real quick before we get started, make sure to download our protection and control PDF. It's a 28 page PDF where we cover all the basics about power system protection and control. So make sure to check it out. The link is in the description below. All right, so first let's talk about what a reverse power element is and a power element more generally speaking is basically just any protection element that can detect real or reactive power flow both in the forward or the reverse directions. Now what the relay considers forward or reverse depends on how the CT that is feeding current into the relay is wired, as well as how this CT is wired into the relay. So let's take a look at a one line diagram to see how we can set this up. All right, so for example, let's say that we had this power system that I have over here in this one line diagram, where basically we have a switch gear. So this over here is a switch gear bus. And then that is being fed from a utility down here. Now our relay is over here again, the SCL 751A relay. And we're going to see later in the video how we can set this up for a specific example. Now, a couple of things that we have to notice here is that the CT that is over here, which of course feeds current into our relay is wired in what we call looking into the switch gear. If you notice over here, the polarity of the CT is over here. This means that current flow into the switch gear, so in this direction over here, is gonna be considered positive. Now, the way that this CT is also wired into the relay itself also matters. So we have to take a look at the three line diagram as well that shows us the polarities of the terminals in the relay so that we can see how the CT is wired into the relay. So there's two things that we have to consider over here again, the CT polarity, but also we need to consider how this CT is wired into the polarities of the relay terminals. Now again, the best way to see this is in the three line diagram that shows us the relay connections. And what we're looking for basically is what terminals the CT is wired into the relay because the relay also has its polarity marks. So even if the CT polarity is positive looking into the switch gear, it also matters how this is wired into the relay terminals. If this is wired into the negative relay terminals, then we have a positive and a negative, and that's also gonna make a negative. So the key point that I'm trying to make here is that both things matter, both how the CT is wired and how the CT is wired into the relay. So let's take a look at the three line diagram for this example. All right, so what I have over here is basically the three line diagram for the same one line diagram that we were looking at previously. Now in this case, again, the switch gear is over here. So this is the switch gear and the utility is down here. Now what I'm trying to look for here is basically again, the CT is wired. You can notice the CT polarities over here, wired what we call looking into the switch gear. So current flow this way would be considered positive. Now we also have to be mindful again of the polarities on the relay terminals. So notice over here, let's follow, for example, the connection for this phase over here. The polarity mark is over here. If we follow this diagram, we can see that this connection is connected to terminal Z01 on the relay over here. Now this again is the polarity terminal or the positive terminal for the A phase current in the relay. So both things again here matter, both how the CT is wired and how the CT leads are connected into the relay. In this case, because both polarities are positive, both on the CT over here and the positive polarity mark is also wired into the positive polarity mark of the relay as well, then this would be, like we said, positive current flow would be into the switch gear, which is over here at the top. So current flow this way would be considered positive because we have over here, current flown into the polarity mark over here at the CT terminals. And then that is also flown into the polarity mark over here at the relay terminals. So because both connections are positive, then we can conclude then that positive power flow or positive current flow, I should say, is into the switch gear. All right, so for this application, we've established that positive power flow would be into the switch gear and reverse power flow would be out of the switch here and into the utility in this case. So now let's see how we can program a reverse power element that will detect power flow into the utility, real power in this case, using the SCL 751A relay as an example. Now notice that the CT leads for the ABC currents are connected to relay inputs Z01, Z03, and Z05, as you can see over here. So all of the polarity marks are on the odd number terminals. This is very common for SCL relays. Basically the odd number current inputs in SCL relays are the polarity inputs, while the even numbers are the non-polarity inputs. Now, 
one thing that is worth noting over here is that the neutral current input IN, this one over here, is also connected in the polarity mark as you can see over here. So basically you can see that we have all the three phases coming this way, this way, and this way, and then they're summed up over here and they wired into the polarity mark on the neutral terminal as well. So both the three phase currents and the neutral terminal are wired, in this case, looking into the switch gear. All right, so let's go back to the one line here for a second. And a couple more things that we need to look at over here are the CT ratios and the PT ratios. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at this example and we're gonna see how we can configure this in an SEL 751A relay to trip when the power flow is 10 megawatts into the utility. So again, in this case, we've established that positive power flow is going to be into the switch gear. So we know then that reverse power flow in this case would be into the utility. Now, the other thing that we can see from this one line is that, that the CT ratio is 3,500 to five. So that's a 700 to one ratio. And then the PT ratio is given over here as 480 divided by 120, so four to one. Now with this in mind, let's calculate the setting again in secondary quantities that will cause the relay to trip when the power flow out of the switch gear and into the utility in this case is 10 megawatts. All right, so we know that real power is basically the voltage multiplied times the current. In single phase terms, we can get that the power P is V times I. Again, this is in single phase terms, and I'm gonna use this to develop the relationship between secondary and primary power. So knowing this, we can say then that the secondary power, which I'm gonna call P sec, is the secondary voltage times the secondary current. Now the same thing applies, of course, to the primary power. It's gonna be primary voltage times primary current. Now what I can do then is I can say, well, Knowing these two equations, I can calculate the secondary power by using the primary power as follows. So the secondary power is gonna be equal to the primary power divided by the PT ratio times the CT ratio, because in here I have that, again, the primary power is primary voltage times primary current, which I know that, of course, that's equal to secondary voltage times the PT ratio and then times the secondary current times the CT ratio. And of course, here I have voltage secondary, current secondary, I know that that's equal to power secondary. And so therefore I can see then, and let me move this up over here, I can see that primary power is simply gonna be secondary power times the CT ratio times the PT ratio. So from that, I can come to this equation then where I can see that the secondary power is gonna be equal to the primary power divided by the CT ratio times the PT ratio. Now, the reason of course that I'm doing this is so that we can now convert the 10 megawatts that we want to trip for to secondary terms. So again, remember that in this case, we have a switch gear bus. So switch gear, and then we have the utility down here, and we have our relay over here and this is basically just the one line that we just looked at but what we want to do in this example is to trip when the power flow is out of the switch here and into the utility and when that's equal to 10 megawatts now that's of course primary power we need to convert that to secondary power which is what we're doing this calculation over here so then i can say that the secondary power is gonna be again the primary power, so 10 megawatts, so 10 times 10 to the six, divided by the CT ratio, which is 700, times the PT ratio, which is four. So if I calculate this, I get that this is equal to 3571.43 watts secondary. So again, let me repeat this. Basically what we're doing here is we're converting 10 megawatts into what they really will actually see in secondary terms because of course we're reading current through a current transformer and we're reading voltage through a voltage transformer. So in secondary real power terms, 10 megawatts is equal to 3571 watts. All right, so now let's see how we can configure this into the SEL 751A relay.
Now what I have over here is an example SEL751A settings file with default settings. Now a couple of things that we need to do, of course, we need to first configure the CT ratio and the PT ratio. We can do that over here under group one, set one. And then if we go over here to main, we can see that we have our CT ratio over here. That for our example is 700, again, 3,500 to five. And our PT ratio, which is over here for our example is going to be four. So 480 to 120, that gives us four to one. So we've configured over here, again, the CT ratio and the PT ratio. Now we need to configure our power element. That's gonna be down here on their power elements and we can configure a single element, so one element that is a three-phase element, so 3P1. In this case, it stands for one element, and you can see here that we could have two if we wanted to, but for this case, we just want one that trips at 10 megawatts. So we're gonna have one, and then the three stands for three-phase, so it's a three-phase element. Now, here's where we enter our settings, and we calculated that to be 35. I'm just gonna round to a full number, 3571, watts secondary and we also of course like i mentioned before we need to configure whether that's real power or reactive power and whether that's in the forward direction or in the reverse direction for our case because of the way that the ct is wired and because of how the ct is wired into the relay we want a negative so a reverse real power element so we would configure this to minus watts what this indicates is again a reverse element that's given by the minus sign. And then we are setting a real power element so we can figure that to watts instead of vars. Now for the delay, this is gonna depend on your application. For this case, I'm gonna set this to 0.1 seconds. Now one point that I wanna make here is that typically you don't wanna set this below 0.1 seconds. The instruction manual actually gives you a warning about this and it basically says don't set this below 0.1 seconds because during disturbances in the power system, this can misoperate. So basically you need some buffer to do the power calculation. 0.1 seconds seems to work fine. That's the bare minimum that you can set it to. Now, of course, you can set this to some number higher. It just depends on your application. In this case, I wanted to make it as fast as I can. But again, the instruction manual warns you to not set this below 0.1 seconds because it can misoperate. So in this case, I'm going to set it to 0.1 seconds. All right, so now we have programmed a reverse power element. Again, we've set it up to trip when the power flow into the utility in our case is 10 megawatts and we will trip once this is the case for longer than 0.1 seconds. So our threshold is 10 megawatts for longer than 0.1 seconds into the utility, which in this case is in the reverse direction. Now we would of course need to program the output of this protection element to a digital output of the relay so that we can actually trip a physical trip coil that would then trip the breaker. Now the relay word bit for this element is 3PWR1T. So for example, if we wanted to configure our output 103, which I can find over here under logic and then slot A, output 103, again, I wanna configure this to be the output of the reverse power element, which if you look at this up in the manual, that's relay word bit 3PWR1T. So I can enter that here. And basically what this is gonna do is now that we've configured our reverse power element, we map that to this output over here. And when that condition is true, when the power flow, real power flow in this case, into the utility is greater than 10 megawatts for longer than 0.1 seconds, then this contact on the relay, this output would physically close. We would then of course wire that to the trip coil of the breaker, and then that would cause the breaker to trip. All right, so that's how you program a reverse power element using the SEL751A relay. Now, if you like this video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos about power system protection and power engineering, and we'll see you in the next one.